This episode is sponsored by Adobe Express. You can find out more at ieg.me forward slash Adobe Express and more information at the end of this episode. If you want the best sound, the closer you can get to your mic, the more it's going to pick up just your voice and nothing else. And when you're doing something like this, where it's spoken word is so important, you need it to be close. It, it gives you that depth and richness. I have three monitors, I have this light rig, and I have these boom arms, and this desk is just perfect. And it's a stand-up desk too, so I can push a button and it's like, and it raises up. So that has been very key. I have to have a situation where I can just sit down, boot up the computer, and hit record in as few steps as possible, or else I'm just gonna get, my ADD is gonna take me off into 17 other directions. Hello, and welcome to the Confident Live Marketing Podcast. I'm Ian Ansegray, and in this season, we're going behind the scenes seeing my guests' studio setups to look at their tech and the gear and how they get started, and how you can get started and level up your studio. Well, I'm very excited to bring in my guest today, who is Laura Davidson, who is a singer, songwriter, mom, and podcaster. These are just a few of the hats Laura Clapp Davidson wears on a daily basis. She also leads a market development team at Shaw Incorporated, where she helps people learn about microphones and solve tech mysteries. And welcome to the show, Laura. It's funny, when I was reading your biography before the show, because I always like to make sure I've, I'm not going to say anything wrong. I read that as tech miseries, not tech mysteries. So I'm sure there misery are a few is a very, that is also an accurate description. Yes. <laughs> I solve those as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You, you turn the miseries into, I don't know, what's the, what's the positive in, into happiness? Oh, yeah, that's, into, that's what you are. I don't know, cures. I don't, <laughs> something yeah, like that. Find the cure for your, yeah. Audio miseries, technical it's funny, miseries. Like, I've, I see that uh, some uh, tech support agents are now calling themselves happiness engineers. Awesome. Oh, yes. We have so, that at Shore, actually. Oh, but we've, we've just changed the name of the department. I can't remember what it is offhand. But yeah, it was, yeah, customer happiness, which is what you ultimately want. If you are a disgruntled yeah. customer and you're calling into a company, the company wants you to be happy. So, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> no, 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 I, I'm not too. It, it makes total sense. So thank you for coming on. We're going to be going behind the scenes with your studio set up. And I love the fact that you've got all these different hats. You know, who says you just do one, the, we're all con confined to do one thing. And yes, you work for Shaw. I think pretty much everyone will have heard of Shaw, um, uh, who makes the most amazing microphones amongst lots of other things as well. But you do all these other things as well. You've got a musical background, you sing... So that makes me happy because that's my background too. <laughs> um, so we might, you're going to come back onto the show. We'll talk a little bit more about your journey with communication and confidence in front of the camera and in front of the microphone. But can you give listeners and viewers like a brief introduction about you highlighting your background that, that makes, that's kind of had an influence on your studio setup today? Yeah, absolutely. So I started off as a singer songwriter. I went to Berkeley College of Music and graduated, moved to Nashville, was doing the singer songwriter thing. So playing gigs all the time, writing all the time, uh, and I had a temp job here or there and started working for a music publisher. And then I got asked to demonstrate a piece of gear at something called the NAM show, which is this annual show for like, it used to be 90,000 people in Anaheim in January, and I was flown out to sing and, and use this wildly complicated box that turned my voice into four voices of harmony. And I fell in love. I was demonstrating, uh, showing people how they could take their, um, you know, arrangement or their demo gig and really, or cover gig and kick it up several notches by having these multiple voices and making it sound very natural. Cause you, you can kind of go the other side there and have it sound really unnatural. But, uh, so I started doing that. And because of that, it led to all this other knowledge of gear and microphones and guitars. Uh, I got an endorsement deal from Alvarez when I was doing that. And it just helped my musical career blossom in a whole different way and support me in a whole different way so that I could continue to make music, but also kind of dig into this love of gear and tech. So that's kind of how I landed here. That was in 2006. So it's, it's been a minute. It's been wow. a long minute. Yeah. And I, I think that's great. You know, we were talking just before we started recording about the balance between being a musician and, other, you know, being a creator and, and you know, having a, working for a business or have, running your own business. And 
there's something I'd, I'm sure you would say the same. Like, th you you can't not do the music side of things. It's something that's kind of part of you, and it's a creative outlet. And your for for podcast listeners who can't see Laura's setup, you know she's got a keyboard. In fact, there's two keyboards there. <laughs> I can see two guitars. Uh, you've got your lovely Shaw microphone, which we're going to come on to in a bit. So you've surrounded yourself with all this gear that helps you, is, which is part of your creativity. And I'm going to ask you about that because in in a, in a minute, because I I love to hear about the space that you're in and how that helps your creativity. But let's dive into your studio setup. And you know, the first question that I always ask is microphone and your audio setup because that is in my view and many people's view is, is the most important even if you're on camera if you're if you're if your microphone if people can't hear you very well they're, mm -hmm. they're going to switch off so I'm, i assume you're with me on that tell us about your microphone setup and and audio setup and why you chose that yeah so i'm using the shore mv7 plus which we just launched this past year and or this current year i guess i should say and it's the new variant of the mv7 which we launched in 2020 it's a usb xlr hybrid microphone meaning i can plug in to a, a mixer or i can plug in directly to my computer which is what i'm doing right now so i'm actually monitoring myself at the same time too i have my earphones my bright green earphones <laughs> <laughs> plugged into the back of my MV7 Plus, and then I'm running USB-C up this gorgeous uh, co-branded Gator boom arm that I'm obsessed with uh, into my MacBook Pro. That's it. So mic, earphones, boom arm, computer. Ta-da! That's my setup. I don't even it have is... to do a B-roll shot because... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not plugging it into a, like a fancy mixer or audio presser or anything like that. And it sounds great. I mean, the quality is really crisp and clear your voice sounds resonant it sounds natural which is everything that you really want and you don't have to play around with any of this kind of complicated stuff like i, I mean i've i've got mine into a, a roadcaster pro and and that can i mean I, I i love playing around with tech but i'm always I, i'm always reluctant to recommend that to people because it took me quite a while to set up what you really mm -hmm. want i think and i'm sure you agree is just good enough quality tech that just works, that doesn't get in the way of you creating your content. Um, I'd love to know a little bit more about the microphone though. So what, how's that compare with its predecessor? You you mentioned it's USB, so you, uh, you can plug that directly into your computer, but it's also XLR. Mm -hmm. So if you do want to be fancy, you've got that yes. option too. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. And I assume, you know, there's the, there's the whole dynamic microphone versus condenser. Tell us a bit more yes. specifically about this. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you because I'm a big visual person. So this is and obviously the... if you can explain for podcast listeners as well, just so that they can Yes, I will explain. Yeah. So I'm I'm holding my MV7, which is the predecessor. This is a custom variant, which I had uh done by Colorware, which you can do if you wanna take your MV7, not the MV7 Plus yet, but we're working on it, uh, and have it match your brand colors, you can do that with this awesome website called Colorware. Uh C uh, C O L O R W A R E, uh, and so anyway, the MV7 has a micro USB on the back, which was kind of one of the things that people asked us to change from the jump, which we did. So now the MV7 Plus has a USB C, which is super handy, uh, and it also has a different uh, LED panel, and it's a little bit longer in terms of the windscreens. So my MV7 Plus because the MV7 kind of had some issues with plosives we heard from people. So we made it uh, a more robust windscreen and made it a little bit longer. And now you could customize the LED panel, whereas on the MV7, you had some tactile controls of volume and mix and mic level, and the mute was kind of hard to reach. Uh, we've now made the whole LED panel tappable. Uh, so it's a cap touch sensor. So if you touch it because you have to cough or mute real quick, it will mute the microphone. Uh, and you also can now use this wonderful piece of software called Motive Mix, which is why the mic is sounding so great. I have it in auto level mode right now, meaning it's going to constantly adjust my gain so that if I get loud or soft, it will accommodate my voice and I don't have to have an engineer or myself riding a fader, digital or otherwise, to make sure that my levels are consistent. And there's also some great uh, compression and EQ and denoising in that mode of mix app. Uh, so that's kind of the differences between the MV7 and MV7 Plus. 
And the other benefit to using Motive Mix is that you can plug in multiple USB microphones into your computer, which a lot of people have accomplished before using something like Loopback. But that can be um, a little confusing for those who aren't audio people, and it's, it costs money. So Motive Mix is free, and you can have up to five USB sources in Motive Mix that you can then bring into your podcast or live stream without having to create an aggregate device. So that's the differences in a nutshell. <laughs> wow. And you said you said an LCD screen. So like for people who haven't come across these microphones, why would, why would a microphone even have that? Like a lot of microphones people are used to, they're just a microphone. So what are these right. fancy things that you can do? You mentioned well, pressing a yeah. mute switch, but there's more than that. So for those who are watching, you can see this LED panel is kind of lighting up and pulsing. So it's working. I have it in live, what's called live meter mode. So it's it's working like a a clip. So if I see it clipping or getting too bright, then I know that I need to adjust my signal. But because I'm in auto level mode, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but it's just a fun way to have your branded colors incorporated into the mic. You can make it solid to match your brand color. You can have it pulse slowly or you can put it into live mode like I have it here. And there's 16.9 million color variant options. So it's really just, it's fun. It looks cool. You can customize it. And then you have that big a uh, whole surface area to tap um, and mute your mic. So that's why. Love it. Love it. And this is a, a dynamic microphone. So you're having it fairly close to you, presumably. Like, so some point we, we had a, a talk about, I think somebody a few weeks ago had the Blue Yeti microphone where you have to speak into the side of it. But with yes. this microphone, you're speaking into the end of it. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? For people who don't know the difference between dynamic microphones and other type of microphones, I figured you'd you'd be a good person to talk to you about that. <laughs> I do. Yes, I, that is my gig. So I hope I know the answer to this. Uh, yeah, so dynamic microphones uh, work differently than condenser microphones because they require a little bit more physical energy to move a coil around a magnet that then converts your acoustic energy into electrical signal. So that's why they're better in untreated spaces because it's not going to react and capture as many sounds like your HVAC, your dog that's laying on the floor next to you. Not that I have that right now. And, uh, you know, different sounds or reverberations around your room. Whereas a condenser microphone is built for the studio, uh, built for treated spaces. Not to say you can't use a condenser mic on stage because this is my favorite vocal microphone that we make. It's called the SM86 and it is a stage condenser mic. But you, you just have to have a little bit more awareness and technique to know that a condenser mic is gonna pick up more so you need to get close to it and you just need to be aware if you're in a wildly loud or reverberant space, condensers are gonna be uh, that much harder to not pick up or to make not pick up all the things around you, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that, ma that makes sense. And like a friend of mine, is Mike Russell, who's been on the show, He's he spent a lot of money in his microphone. It's a condenser microphone, but he's spent a lot of money on treating his studio space. So it's like perfect okay. audio. And so like, fine, that's great. But for most of us who don't have that luxury of of uh, treating our space, I think you know, I assume you would agree, a dynamic microphone makes a lot more sense. Uh, some people yes. like struggle with the idea of having it in shot. Like both of us, we've yeah. got microphones in shot. I love that. From a branding point of view, you know, I've got a mic flag here. You know, you mentioned with uh, your microphone, the Shure microphone, you can you can brand it as well with different colors, which is awesome. But like not everyone is into the microphone in shot side of things. And I would say, well, in a, this sounds very unkind, but you kind of have to get over that. But like, right. do you have a, what's your view on that? Do you, would you agree with that? Or do you, yeah, what do you think? Yes, I do agree with that, that if you want the best sound, the closer you can get to your mic, the more it's going to pick up just your voice and nothing else. And when you're doing something like this, where the spoken word is so important, you need it to be close. It, it gives you that depth and richness. If I were to move this out of my shot, you know, auto level mode will accommodate a little bit more, not out of my shot, my shot's too wide, but you know, move it away from me. You're hearing more of the reverberance in my room. Yeah. So that's, I love this. I love being close to the mic and, and getting that richness and depth. And also I'm speaking off axis on the mic. I always tell people that. So you were mentioning with the Blue Yeti, 
that you know you have to address it from the side and not from the top, which a lot of people were doing. This one is a front address microphone, but if you do go straight on axis, you might have plosives, even though this oh, yeah. has a digital popper stopper too. I forgot to mention that. Um, I just I just turn a little bit and it helps. But um, yeah, if you're wanting the camera to not be in shot, you have some options, but the real thing that you'd want to do if you're doing that is to use a lavalier mic, which is one that you would physically wear. And then you're just not as aware of it, which we do make. We make some really great lavaliers. I've got them all here. So, um, yes. yeah, but but it's not there's something about using a dynamic microphone, having it up close that I think it gives that more that intimacy. Like if you're listening to the podcast now, as opposed to maybe watching it through speakers or through your phone, there's something about the fact that we're using these dynamic microphones. It feels like you're just here with us in the same room, even though mm -hmm. we're, we're not in the same room. We're, you know, thousands of miles apart. It has that <laughs> intimacy because, because we're kind of close up to the microphone, I think. I wanted to ask you, we will get onto other stuff too, but since you so know, know so much about microphones and audio, I want to ask you all these audio questions. And you obviously do sing it. You do a lot of singing. Um, do you use that same microphone for singing? How versatile is it? Can you use it for, you know, obviously for podcasting, for video? Can you use it for other types of uh, content like singing and, and music? Yeah, absolutely. People use the MV7 Plus and MV7 a lot to do uh, multiple recording type scenarios. It's really great on guitar, uh, especially electric guitar, you know, cabinets, because it can take a lot of what's called SPL, sound pressure level. Um, but when I do a live stream that's music based, I will use my performance stage microphone, the SM86, or our new Nexodyne, which I don't have right in front of me. Oh, fail. Uh, but you know, that's, I will use that because I want to have that same experience because I'm when I do my live streams, and it's music based, I run it into a vocal effects processor, and then I have a little bit more control. So can I use this to do studio vocals? Yes, but I am spoiled and have, you know, schmancier side address condenser mics that I use <laughs> I use for that. That's the technical term, schmancier. Yeah, I like, I like that. And how, just, uh, this is just my own kind of, because I'm, I'm really interested in the, that other microphone, you the SM, remind me of it, the SM? 86. 86. SM. So how does that compare to like, the one that, is loved all around the world, the SM58. How I mean, the SM58 yeah. is, I'm assuming a dynamic microphone, but you have to excuse it my is. ignorance. Yeah. So no, you're not. You're fine. I mean, good. I don't I mean, have my, I don't have my 58, my SM58. I have a beta 58, but I have the SM57 mm. here. And so this is a dynamic microphone. It is the industry standard because it's nearly indestructible. Sounds great. Sound engineers know how to make it work on spoken. Uh, word, vocals, instruments, you could put SM57 or SM58 on a number of different things. And if you look at the SM86 capsule, as opposed to, I don't know, do this one, let's see. I'll take my Beta 58 because it looks just like an SM58. Here's your differences. And for those who are listening, the SM58, the Beta 58, they use the same uh, cartridge. and it has a much bigger design. This is using that dynamic technology where there's a diaphragm, a magnet in here, and a coil surrounding it. Whereas the SM86 is so much more delicate and small. This is a condenser microphone again. And the way condensers work is that instead of having the magnet and the coil, they have an electrically charged back plate. So if you've ever come across something called phantom power, that's providing that electrical charge to the back plate. There's a teeny space in between, allowing the diaphragm to move and agitate that and create that, that signal. So totally different design and it responds so differently. And, and it's just, it's a beautiful mic. I love it. Well, it does, it does look very nice too. So that's really interesting. I'm wanting to incorporate a lot more music into what I do. Um, you know, I, not sure I'm necessarily bring back my silly songs, but you never know if, if you enjoyed the silly songs in the past, let me know. But yeah, I've, I've been thinking a lot more about making this space that I'm in, not just for podcasting and video creation, but also bringing my music into what I do too, which is obviously what you're doing. And I'm going to definitely check out your live. Do you still do live streams with your, with your music making? 
Those are few and far between these days. Mm. It was happening a mm. lot in COVID. I, I would do happy hours and just, yeah. you know, for my own sanity, uh, just do some stuff. But there's, you can see stuff. Um, one of the best ones I did was with the Women's International Music Network, and it was called the She Rock Spotlight. And I got to do a really cool performance in this same room. So you can hear what it sounds like. And it, it sounds like, um, you know, a live recording, but in a, in a home studio. So that was really fun. Awesome. Well, we've spoken a lot about microphones, but we need to quickly go through the other parts of your studio. So uh, if you're watching, you'll be noticing, obviously, Laura's camera. Tell us about your camera. Do you have just one camera? Do you have multiple cameras? Tell us about what you, why you chose what you've got. Uh, so I have a Sony ZV-E10 as my main camera, and I really don't have a ton of need to do uh, other angles for the type of content that I'm creating, but I do have the Obsbot, I always get that wrong over here. The oh, tiny. Yes. I love this little guy. And so that's on another boom arm over here. So I can do product shots or I can have, you know, just another thing to switch to. And I use my Elgato Stream Deck for that. I haven't bit the bullet and upgraded that one. So I'm still using the OG with the, you know, USB, whatever it is, A connector. Um, but it works fine and I love it. Uh, yeah. And so that's my, my camera setup and my lighting is just a basic, uh, box light that I bought from Amazon a long time ago, probably seven or eight years ago. And I got a kit of four of them that came with the stands, the lights, and it's huge. And I need to change that as well, but it works. So until it, it works. doesn't, that, that's here the thing. we are. There's always, there's always this like never ending kind of list of <sighs> things that we're going to get. You've also got, you've got like, uh, is it like neon lights or you got this kind of yeah. text? So tell us about that. Cause I'm really interested in that in the background. Yeah, so that uh, we bought for a, a trade show called She Podcasts Live. And then the show did not end up happening, which was super sad because it's a great, great organization. And I love that group of ladies. But um, I got to keep the sign uh, because it just became part of my brand. So it says Sound Extraordinary, which is a sure tagline. And um, yeah, and then I have actually up a little bit. Uh, yeah. So those beautiful pieces of artwork on the top, my daughters made, and they are acoustic panels oh, of sorts, cool. which when at Ecamm Creator Camp, I was teaching people that you can just go to Michael's, buy a basic canvas, paint it how you want, design it how you want, and put some foam batting behind it, and it'll help dampen the sounds in your room. So my daughters made those, and they're awesome. So they're up top. Awesome. Well, we're going to come back to like your your studio um, and what the personalization of it in a minute. But I forgot to ask you about your your boom arm. You mentioned that a little bit, but you also, you also got another boom arm for your Obspot camera. Mm -hmm. um, and do, I want to ask you about like shock mounts. Do you need, just, it doesn't look like you have a shock mount. Do you need a shock mount or do you not? Uh, tell us a little bit about what you've got set up there. Cause I do love yeah. the look of your, of, of the boom arm. It looks cool. Thank you. Yes, this I, I'm, tapping on the desk and you really can't hear it it has very good isolation because it has mm. this great uh base on the bottom that kind of alleviates and buffers the tapping on the the keyboard so i have that and and yeah nothing else this is kind of isolating it as well uh and it comes with an extender for the sm7 db so that you can put it on here and because the sm7 db which I also have right here, uh, has this guy that gets a little too close to it when you when you plug it in. So this is a great boom arm. I can't say enough good things about that. What's the what's the name of the boom arm? Just remind me the name. Oh goodness. It's you would ask me that. It's the Sorry. Gator Broadcast. Boom it's in the show arm. notes. It's in the show it notes. Is. I did link it. I linked Just, it. It's fine. I did I linked it with a bundle on shore.com because you can get at the mic, the boom arm, and some headphones, which are SRH 440As. These are yeah. great headphones. I see Ian's wearing some headphones right now. I'm an earphone kind of gal when I'm recording because my hair, you know, but um, these I use all the time when I record my podcast. So there's a sweet bundle in there. Save some money. That's, some great that gear. sounds good. Yeah, and I would wear earphones. I just, I'm lazy. I just put the oh. on. Just it, throw it's them the, on. I love it's it. the Shaw by Gator Deluxe Articulating Desktop Microphone Boom Stand. Wow. I totally botched that one, Ian. Don't tell my boss. Okay. <laughs> Secret safe with us, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, all, it's mm -hmm. all good. 
Computer. What computer or devices do you use? And have you got anything as special set up or that, or is it pretty simple? It's pretty simple. You know, it's funny when I was going into the show notes, I was like, my computer, it's a work computer. I have over here a studio um, computer, which is an iMac, which I never use. For, I only use that for music creation. I, I purposefully bought it and I try to keep it off the internet and keep it, you know, clean as possible. Um, this one is a 2019 MacBook Pro. And I was like, wow, that's not a new one, but it's working. Sometimes she sounds like she's on fire, but you know, I do, I do make her work pretty hard. So that's what I'm using and that's it. That's why yeah. I love this. As creators, our lives are so easy right now. Like you could yeah. just go and I always use Ecamm Live. It's my, my choice for live streaming um, because it's just so easy too. And the community is so great. So that's yeah. my setup. Yeah. So while well, similar, similar here, we're using Ecamm Live for this, um, this recording and I love it. It's just the flexibility, the power It's quite, it is easy once you just get past opening up for the first time, but, uh, it's, it's great. Love it. Okay. We are running out of time, but I did want to quickly, before we get to the quick fire round, I did want to ask you about your space because of the personalization, I think matters a lot to that. So how have you made this, your studio space uniquely yours to foster creativity and productivity so that you can do your best work where you are? Uh, the desk that I'm using right now, I wish I could show you, but it's such a mess. I would die. It has been such a game changer for me. It's from Amazon. It's in the show notes. I think, I hope I gave a link there and it's just the perfect workspace because I have, there's like this little shelf in front of me. I have all my mics here. So as you've seen me pulling them out <laughs> like a magic show, they're all right there. And then I have my headphones hanging up on the wall right here. I have three monitors, you know, I have this light rig and I have these boom arms and this desk is just perfect. And it's a stand up desk too. So I can push a button and it's like, and it raises up. So that has been very key. I fought it for several years. I just got this in December and I'm so, so happy with it. But my biggest thing is that I have to have a situation where I can just sit down, boot up the computer and hit record in as few steps as possible or else I'm just going to get my ADD is going to take me off into 17 other directions. So that's, that's my key piece of gear is my desk, I think. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm so with you on that one. You just get rid of all the, all the barriers in the way. So you can yes. just create it. And it's a cool desk. This is the, I don't know how you pronounce it, the Air Gear Electric yeah. Standing Desk with double drawers. I won't go through the whole title, but it looks really awesome. And I I, I love, sta mine's a standing desk too. It gives you that flexibility um, to be able to either stand up or sit down. I'm currently sitting down, but sometimes I like to stand up. Me too. You've got all of, all of that together. Wow. We've, we, could, we could go on so much more talking about all this, but we are... Time, time for the, the quick fire round. So we, you have a okay. minute. You've got to go with your gut reaction with these. Um, so let's cue the music and let's see how this is going oh to work. Gosh. Okay, so number one, ring lights, good or bad? Bad. Okay. Stream deck, essential or optional? Essential. Love it. Okay, next question. Microphone, in or out of shot? <laughs> We'll cover this in. It's got to be in. in. Yeah, up. <laughs> Webcam or fancy camera? Fancy camera, 100%. It's got to be standing desk or sitting desk. We've already talked about this. Yeah, standing. Love standing. It. Okay, one big monitor or dual monitors? Well, I got three, so I'm, I'm going to go oh, dual. Oh, wow. Okay, three. Background yeah. music. Is it a mood setter or a distraction? Distraction. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Coffee or tea while recording? Coffee all day, every day. Uh, sitting or standing? Uh, podcasting, sitting, singing, standing. Oh, cool. Acoustic panels, aesthetic choice, or acoustic essential? Acoustic essential! <laughs> no, not. I don't know. It's both. <laughs> both. As I said, there's no right or wrong with these, but uh, you got to yeah. go with your gut reaction. Um, I was going to ask you so many other things, like, you know, what would be your dream setup and all this kind of stuff, but we are out of time. I'm trying to keep these short and sweet. Thank you so much, Laura. It's been great to have you on the show. You will be back with another episode, but tell us how uh, listeners, viewers can connect with you. They want, if they have any questions, where do you tend to hang out? Uh, I hang out on Instagram a lot. So at Laura Clapp Music, C-L-A-P-P. -P. That's my 
artist name, uh, lauraclap.com or song 43. Uh, that's my podcast. So you can find me there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. It's been great to have you on the show. We are out of time. Uh, thank you so much for plugging us into your ears and watching us on YouTube, if that's where you're watching us. Do check out the website at iag.me forward slash podcast where you can see previous episodes, listen to them, watch them, read the, the blog posts. But until next time, I encourage you to level up your impact, authority, and profits through the power of Confident Live Video. See you soon. Toodaloo. So before you go, I'd love to tell you a little bit more about Adobe Express, who is sponsoring this episode. I'm a proud Adobe Express ambassador, and I've been using it for years to help create my visual content. Now, if you're anything like me, you're looking for ways to spice up your digital content and also to make it really super easy and quick. And Adobe Express doesn't just make this possible, but it makes it fun and easy too. And Adobe Express can be your go-to tool for creating stunning social graphics, logos, flyers, banners, you name it, and doesn't look the same as what everyone else is creating. Imagine having a powerhouse that helps you transform basic visuals into eye-popping creations with just a few clicks. Sounds good? Well, let's dive in a little bit deeper. You get thousands of professionally designed templates to get your creative juices flowing. And if that wasn't enough, you can even create your own templates using the built-in AI tool. So you can just type in exactly what you want and you can generate ideas and go from there. It's amazing. You've also got the ability to magically remove backgrounds, whether it's from an image or a video, convert images from JPEGs or PNGs, or switch up video formats using the quick actions. It's like having a mini design studio at your fingertips. And the magic doesn't just stop there. I've already mentioned some of the AI features in Adobe Express, but you have Adobe Firefly baked into Adobe Express and it's getting better and better each time. You've got text to image generation, generative fill, so you can just remove or add objects from a photo. Working on a project with your team, well, you've got collaboration built into this where you can seamlessly share and, and work on projects with shared templates and libraries. And you've got the amazing scheduler built into Adobe Express. You can schedule to Facebook, X, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, TikTok, and not just one of these per network, you can actually add multiple ones of these now. You also gain access to an endless array of Adobe stock photos, videos, and music, and over 20,000 licensed fonts. And you can even link with existing Photoshop and Illustrator files directly in Adobe Express and get them synced up, which is amazing if you're working with designers. Adobe Express works with QR codes, PDFs, images, videos, you name it. Well, why don't you just give it a whirl? Click on the link in the episode description or just go to iag.me forward slash Adobe Express and let your creativity soar with Adobe Express. That's it for this week. I'll see you very soon. Toodaloo. Thanks for watching the Confident Live Marketing Show with Ian Anderson Gray. Make sure you subscribe at iag.me forward slash podcast so you can continue to level up your impact, authority, and profits through the power of live video. And until next time, Toodaloo. Toodaloo.